everyone, I am here today to review This Mortal Coil by Emily Savada. I received this book initially from the publishers by NetGalley and I then enjoyed it that much that I went out and bought my own physical copy. Also, before we get into the review, I had the amazing opportunity to go and interview Emily Savada a couple of weeks ago now in London. So if you want to watch that, I will link that in the cards and also in the description down below. I highly recommend it. You can watch it if you haven't read this, but I'd be quite cautious towards the end of the video because we do start discussing the second book, which might give away small clues about this one. On the subject of spoilers, this review will be spoiler free. So you are safe to watch this throughout without me spoiling you. So into the book. This Mortal Coil is a YA sci-fi novel about a young girl named Katerina and she lives in a really different world to the world as we know it. So they're quite technologically advanced, like in their arms they have a panel and in that panel you can get loads of different apps. So these apps might just be simple, simple sort of ordinary things or they might be more complex things. You can have VR with them, you can like use the panel to get healed at the doctors in some cases. It's like, this panel is like your everything, it's your pass. So in this world there is a really awful virus right now and the best way of protecting yourself from this virus is without a doubt to head into some bunkers. Many people can't go to the bunkers either because they don't trust the people that are running them or because they have like sort of apps in their panel that don't allow them to be able to gain access because they're not official apps but they need them to sort of keep them alive. That is the main sort of gist of it. If you are on the outside world you basically have to eat dead people, you have to kill people and eat them to survive and not get the virus and um, yeah it's pretty gruesome. As I said, this story follows a girl named Kat and her father, Dr. Lakeland, is a scientist who might be able to create a cure for the virus. As a result, he is kidnapped very, very early on in the novel, very early on. And so Kat has to learn to survive without him. He warns her to keep away from the bunkers because the company that runs them, Cartaxis, he doesn't think they can be trusted. So she struggles and somehow manages to fend for herself and gets herself some you know friends that will help keep her alive and then all of a sudden one day a guy named Cole comes after her and Cole works for Cartaxis and um, that's where that's where I'm going to leave the plot if you will I'm going to go into some of my thoughts about this novel first of all I just want to say I can't remember the last time a book kept me awake several times until stupid o'clock in the morning even when it meant that I was barely getting any sleep before work. That's what this book did to me. I couldn't stop myself from devouring the whole thing and I must say early on I was getting really kind of bad vibes. I was worried that we were going to get just like your typical teenager needs to save the world kind of vibes and I was like oh no this is gonna really let me down isn't it? And I'm glad to say that that was not the case. There was so much more to this book than that. So all the same, I was a little wary when I was starting this book because it became very clear very early on that the science was going to be quite a prevalent role. And while obviously that was the case to a degree, I didn't understand quite how much it would pop up. But all the same, I found out also really early on that that was okay and that I was getting on with that just fine. It wasn't too much for me to understand, it wasn't difficult to follow, which I have found to actually be a problem with sci-fi books in the past. I've struggled to follow them all the way through, so this is very accessible. Everything's really well explained, it's also actually really believable. You could totally believe that any of this is actually happening and that this could happen in the future. So I loved the characters in this book. And the boundaries that you come across between good and evil, you don't really know who you can trust, who you can't. I'm not going to go into any details about which characters I felt which way about with that because, again, spoilers are plenty. But you really don't know who to trust. Kat is on quite the journey of trying to work out who she can trust, who she can't trust. That keeps twisting you right till the very end. It's just like every time you think you know 
who you're okay with, it all just gets messed up again. And I was wrong so many times about who I couldn't, couldn't trust in this book. It also goes into showing that sometimes good people do bad things for good reasons and also vice versa you know everything isn't always so cut and dry black and white there are shades of grey this book does an excellent job at showing you that along with that you also go into the discussion of nature versus nurture in this book which was really fascinating and really interesting and again tied into the whole good and bad and grey and whether it's nature or whether it's nurture that makes you the way you are and that was really fascinating. I really loved Katerina. She was really strong, really inspiring, yet you also got to see the weaker side of her, um, especially things like self-doubt, which is totally understandable in the situation she was in. Like, you'd have to be a very ridiculously, probably impossibly strong person to not have any form of doubts on the journey that Kat goes through in this book. It all just led to her feeling more real as a character. You could identify with her more because she'd have these sort of anxious thoughts about sort of certain things and you'd find yourself thinking, yeah, yeah, I feel that way about this sort of situation. Only much more extreme than this, of course. So, like, it's really easy to identify with her. And I feel like Emily Savada has a real talent for crafting real characters in a world that feels equally real and possible. Everything feels, you know, like you could be in the future reading back on some sort of diary or something of what happened, like some sort of textbook in what happened like a hundred years ago, like that sort of situation. It feels so real, so intense, it's so gripping, it pulls you in and just you get that engrossed, you think this is all really happening, quite frankly. There is a love interest or two thrown into this, and at first I was worried we were going down the love triangle route. Now, after reading, I didn't feel like it was a love triangle. I'm sure that some people do feel that way. This topic is covered in my interview with the author. Again, she doesn't agree that it's a love triangle, but it's just something to be aware of if you are a little bit love tri triangle kind of biased, like, oh my God, I'm not reading a love triangle book. If you want to pick this up, but you're worried about the love triangle aspect, I'd say just go into this anyway because there is so much more to it than just your simple love triangle. Meanwhile, any romance that is present in this book is not overbearing. It feels natural as if it could have totally developed in that way in the situation that happens that you find yourself in in this book. You'd think that if you were those characters, that would totally happen because of the closeness and the relationship that you develop in trying to stay alive, basically. So it feels like it would be a natural thing to happen in that environment. My favourite part of this book overall, though, was definitely the twists and turns it took. It's almost like the author gives you clues throughout as to what's going to happen, but you don't realise that that was a clue until you've gone past that clue, <laughs> if you follow me. So I can't give any examples or it would be a spoiler, but the ending especially was one of those moments. I was just at the end, I was like, oh my God, why didn't I realise that? Like e even Kat had all the clues, that all the clues were there as like that these things were gonna happen. And both Kat and also me as a reader just never picked up on any of these things at all. It's like, what on earth? You are such an idiot. That was so obvious. It's always like, it's so clever, it's unbelievable. Even things like traps, again, everything was obvious it was a trap afterwards, but beforehand you don't pick up on this at all. It's like, all oh, the clues were there. The author gives us the clues. The author gives Kat the clues. None of us get the clues. And so obviously chaos ensues. And by the end of this book, you will be left wanting the sequel, which doesn't come out until like October or November this year, which is just like, ah. So this has become one of my favorite books of all time. It's so fast paced, it cost me lots of sleep because I just couldn't put it down. If you want to start reading this, I'd recommend doing it maybe like on a weekend when you've got nothing planned so you can just sit and read it in one sitting because you will feel like you want to do that, trust me. I mean, this isn't overly long anyway, it's 450 pages, but the font's not overly small. 
you will literally fly through it. While on the subject as well, I have got a signed copy, isn't it beautiful? But yeah, I can't recommend this book enough, whether you're into sci-fi, whether you're not into sci-fi, I think that this will still be right down your alley if you enjoy thrillers, for example. It's just, it's got a little bit of everything in here that you would probably want and Emily said something really interesting to me when I was interviewing her. She said that a lot of people after reading this book didn't realise that they needed a science loving female character until they read this book and I think that was so true and so yeah I can't recommend this enough. So thank you so much for watching this review. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe by clicking the image of me if you want to see more book reviews and other bookish content from me. And I will see you soon. Bye-bye.